Okay, so today we are going to be ranking the episodes in the first season of Avatar The Last Airbender. Thank you to the commenter who recommended this. I got unreasonably excited when you suggested it. I recently watched through Avatar The Last Airbender for the very first time. I documented it. Playlist somewhere, as well as the description in case you missed it. Now I'm watching it again, this time with my husband, his first time, my second time through. And now we're gonna rank the episodes now that I've watched each of them twice, at least. Tier ranker on the screen. I have each episode, I'm gonna summarize them so that we're all on the same page, maybe show a little clip of each of them, and then we're gonna rank. Episode one doesn't need much explanation. It's the episode where Katara and Sokka find Aang and learn that he is the Avatar. This is also the episode where we're introduced to Zuko and Iroh. We find out that Zuko isn't, he's, ben he's bending with his muscles and Iroh tells him not to. It's also where we get some penguin sledding. All good things. Season one, it is solid. It is good. I mean, episode one. Solid, good, fine. Episode two, this is the episode where Zuko infiltrates Katara and Sokka's village. Sokka tries to face off against Zuko. Zuko takes him down pretty easily. Aang gets taken aboard the ship and then escapes in a really cool way. It's also a good, setup video. How do we rank episode two? I'm gonna also put it in the fine. This should have been called good. I'm not happy that I labeled it fine. Can we pretend this is called good? It's gonna be in the good category. It is a solid episode, more setup, nothing yet that had gripped me in either watching, but still enjoyable. Nice job introducing a bunch of characters. Episode three, this is when the stakes start to be raised. We go to the Southern Air Temple. Aang realizes that his people were wiped out by the Fire Nation. We get some flashbacks of his history. We start to learn a bit more about him, as well as we get some good character building for Zuko. We see him facing off against General Zhao, having an Agni Kai. Episode three is great. It's more setup, but it's, Great setup. Episode four, the warriors of Kiyoshi. So this is where we first meet Suki, who I just love so much. Team Avatar gets tied up by the Kiyoshi warriors. We're introduced to this incredible group of women. Sokka's ego gets hit pretty hard by getting bested by a group of women. And we get a great arc for Sokka in this episode where he goes from being hot-headed, thinking he can do anything, thinking he can beat anyone, to being humbled, learning how to be a Kyoshi warrior, learning to fight with them. It was a great episode for Sokka. I love Kyoshi Island. I love the Kyoshi warriors. This is a great episode. This is also the episode where Aang gets a lot of attention from some other little girls around his age. And um, Katara gets a little bit irritated, a little bit jealous, and gets a little bit of a big head for a minute there. And also this is the episode where Zuko tracks them down, finds them, and we get a really cool fight scene at the end. I'm putting this episode in, in, in incredible. Season one is admittedly my least favorite season of all three, and it's the season that I would say is like, good, it's a good season, it's, it's solid, it's great. Um, but then the seasons two and three are top tier, amazing, perfect, um, can't be, can't be bested, favorite series of all time. But season one, you know, I'm not gonna have as many episodes that I really, really love. And the Kyoshi Warriors, man, that's one of them. Episode five is the King of Omashu. So this is where we meet Boomy. This is when Aang puts on that silly disguise and they, hang out in the Earth Kingdom of Omashu for a while. There's the slides that they slide down. Aang forgets he can airbend for a little bit and that gets them into trouble while they're on the slides. They meet Boomy. Boomy is... Boomy. Katara and Sokka are being encased in these crystal thingies. Aang has to do his test. Then he realizes that Boomy is his old friend and yeah, it's, it's a nice little side episode. Honestly, none of the Earth Kingdom episodes in season one are great for me. I know they're well loved, but they're fine for me. They are fine. Actually, I should probably be ranking these according to how I feel about them. Move! So episode two is better than episode one to me. 
But I just remembered that the fine category is supposed to be considered the good category, so should I put it in the eh category? Because no, it's not an eh. It's fine. It's fine. Episode six, Imprisoned. This is a great episode for Katara. This is the episode where they meet, ooh, I don't remember his name, the earthbender boy. Uh, they see that he can bend and then someone else, uh, well, then there's a, bo a man who's trapped in a mine that has collapsed and the boy helps the man with his earth bending, then the man turns the boy in because what? He's imprisoned. This is the episode where we get that great scene between Katara, Sokka, and Aang where uh, Katara tries to get herself thrown in prison. It's so much goodness in this episode. Then she's in prison. She does her speech trying to rile everybody up. It doesn't work, but then it does. We get to see some great earth bending for the first time, which is Fantastic. This is a great episode, man. I'm gonna put it in the upper side of great. I think that's fair. Editing Murphy popping in to say, no, it's absolutely not fair. This episode is incredible. Next is the spirit world or the first, uh, the summer solstice part one. So this is the episode where Iroh gets captured and Aang visits a town that's being harassed by a spirit and he tries to confront it and ends up getting stuck in the spirit world for a while. This is a great episode for Iroh because we get to see how silly and fun he is, which we've seen some up to this point, but he's really on display here, as well as seeing how very clever he is. This is also a really great episode for establishing more of who Aang is. We really get to see him as a peacemaker and someone who will put as much effort as he possibly can into peacefully di diffusing a situation as opposed to confronting it with aggression and force. Oh, and we this is the episode where we find out that we have until the summer solstice. This episode is, ooh, is it great or is it good? I'll put it on the latter end of great. Episode eight, Avatar Roku's Winter Solstice Part Two. This is where Aang does the thing that's necessary for all chosen one slash hero stories, and that's randomly decides to leave his friends because he's tired of putting them in danger. Thankfully, it doesn't last long. The friends immediately say, no, we're going with you, and then they do that thing. So then they make it to Fire Nation, to one temple where uh, Avatar Roku's statue is. We get a betrayal of one of the guards. We get Sokka being the idea guy for the first time, even though his idea doesn't actually work. We get some comedy and we get the, uh, the first time, I think, if I'm remembering correctly, that Avatar, uh, that Aang gets to really talk with Avatar Roku. This episode is solid. I like it. It's enjoyable. We'll put it at the latter end of great as well. Episode nine, The Water bending scroll. <sighs> this is the episode where they take a slight detour in another town. They uh, end up hanging out with some pirates. This again is a great episode for comedy with Aang, with the whole team avatar, with Iroh. We get so many great scenes from Iroh. This is also one of the only episodes where Zuko laughs and it's great context for him just busting out laughing. We have some really cool fight scenes, which I love because I love the way fighting looks in this world with bending. And we get some great dialogue and conflict with Zuko and the crew. This is a great episode. No, it's an incredible episode. It's incredible. It's probably right behind the Kyoshi Warriors episode for me. Episode 10, Jet. This is the episode where we're introduced to the Treehouse people, a community of people that are ne'er-do-wells, miscreants. They're a rebel team. They're trying to live on their own. They seem charming. They seem cool. They seem great. Katara has a little romance with a jet. Turns out they're not so cool and they want to slaughter an entire village. I really like this episode because I like the mechanics of the way this uh, community of people functions. I like the surprise that they're actually not cool this whole time. I like seeing that this is one of the first instances where we see Sokka's gut Sokka Sokka's uh, instincts are actually really on point and a lot of times the other two are just kind of being gullible and trusting the world and Sokka saying, no, 
this doesn't work, these people are bad, or this situation is bad, and people don't listen to him, but he is a great leader, he's just not honed yet in season one. Anyway, this is a great episode. I'm gonna put it at the top end of great. Ah, uh, The Great Divide, episode 11. This is apparently the lowest ranked uh, episode of Avatar all three seasons amongst the fandom, according to IMDb and Tim. I don't blame you guys, everyone. Me too. The Great Divide is the episode where two warring tribes want to cross the canyon at the same time. They bicker the whole time and it's resolved really annoyingly. This is a side quest. This is a side story that doesn't really affect the team. This isn't an episode that's good for any of them, that grows any of them, that furthers the plot in any way. This is an episode that doesn't really seem like it needs to be in the show at all. And on top of that, I was, I just, nah, I'm annoyed at how this episode resolves, where basically Aang just lies and says, oh, I knew them. Actually, they were just kids and they were fighting over a ball or something and they went in timeout for a little while and everything's fine. And then these two tribes say, oh, let's be friends then. And then Aang says, great. And then after they leave, he says, I lied. I have no idea what these two tribes' history is. And it just all feels so pointless to me. So yeah, it's an eh. Next episode is The Storm. So this is the episode where Sokka gets left behind and then joins a uh, fisherman to help him and weather a storm. And uh, this is also really the focus of this story is, or of this episode is flashbacks. We get to see more of Aang and why he disappeared, that he actually was running away. We also get to see Zuko's backstory of why he was banished. We get to see his Agni Kai, or rather the one that he refuses to have, why he has his scar. It's a lot of monologuing in this episode, a lot of characters sitting around saying, then what happened? And then the either Aang or Iroh telling more of the backstory interrupted with some comedy with Sokka and his boat trip. This is also the episode where we get to see Iroh redirect lightning for the first time, which is awesome. This is a necessary episode, but on rewatch, it's less entertaining from, from a storytelling perspective. It's not wonderfully done, but it does provide us with really important information that we do need. I'm gonna put it in fine, and I'm gonna put it in front of the Earth nation one. I like the information it gives, I just don't like the way it's told. Episode 13 is the blue spirit. So this is the one where Sokka gets sick and then Katara gets sick and Aang goes on a journey trying to find how to cure them and we get a lot more focus on Zuko in this episode. Aang meets up with a healer who feeds her cat and then tells him to go find some frozen frogs. He does and gets captured. Zuko becomes the blue spirit for the first time and he rescues Aang and uh, tries to take him away, gets injured. Aang uh, rescues him, protects him after Zuko has rescued Aang. And then we see them wake up or we see Zuko wake up next to Aang and Aang has a heart to heart with Zuko and basically says we could have been friends. This is a great episode for Aang and once again seeing him as a peacemaker, seeing how it really hurts him that he has to have this feud with Zuko, how he truly sees the best in Zuko and wants him to grow. We also see a lot of turmoil in Zuko in this episode, a ton. We get layers for him and see how much he's really battling within himself. Uh, this scene resolves with Zuko shooting a fireball at Aang and Aang running away. Ooh, it's great setup. Ugh, it's, oh, it's such a good, this is a great episode. I am going to put this one right behind Jet. Once again, I really don't know what was wrong with this version of Murphy, but this episode was incredible. The fortune teller. This is another sort of side quest kind of episode, but a really, really funny one. I love the dynamic of this town. I love seeing Sokka once again. This is the episode where Sokka, an episode where Sokka is proving that his instincts are good and should be trusted. And while Katara is completely wrapped up in believing this fortune teller, um, Aunt Wu, wanting 
thing to have her fortune told for absolutely every facet of her life. Aang's really just caught up in his crush on Katara and neither one are really paying attention to anything that matters. And Sokka's over here saying, this is ridiculous. You guys are being insane. There's so much comedic value for this episode, but it's also a great episode for Sokka in seeing how he really is a great leader, just still a really rough one that needs some growth. This is also good build up for Katara and uh, Aang, which I care significantly less about. This is a great episode, but probably, oh, uh, probably at the end of the great spectrum. Let's see here. Just realized that I was saying summer solstice for all the summer solstice episodes, for all the winter solstice episodes. You know what? It's fine. Bato of the Water Tribe. So this episode is the one where Team Avatar meets up with Bato from uh, Katara and Sokka's tribe. This is a great episode for Aang because we see him digress into a worse version of himself. Uh, this is a great episode for seeing Aang's faults, for seeing his insecurities and seeing him make bad decisions. This is also a great episode for adding depth to both Katara and Sokka, as well as depth to their relationship with each other. This is also the episode with that one bounty hunter chick and her anteater type creature that sniffs people out, that can see, sense. And Zuko uses Katara's necklace to hunt them down using that animal. We also get a great fight scene out of this episode when Zuko and Aang face off. We get to see Zuko's power as a firebender as well as, again, Aang being an evader. And them using their smarts to uh, get away from them. I'm gonna put this episode at the front end of fine, which is actually good. This move, daggum you. Really? Fine. It can go there then. Nah, that feels unfair. I'm gonna put it at the back end of great. Episode 16, The Deserter. This is the episode where they go into another town, they try to hide their identities, they get involved in some sort of, um, performance and then find themselves with a fire master. Aang demands to be taught firebending, but he hasn't mastered earthbending yet, so the firebender refuses to teach him. Aang insists, and so the firebender, the fire master, begrudgingly agrees to do so. This is again a really good episode for both Aang and Katara because we get to see Aang's impatience, we get to see some of his faults, we get to see him get sloppy and end up hurting Katara, and this is the episode where, Kat where Katara first learns that she has the ability for healing. And that firebender master was uh, General Zhao's old master. We got a really cool face off there at the end, which I really enjoyed. I'm gonna put this at the beginning of the good tier slash fine tier. It's good. This is the good tier. I'm gonna put it at the beginning of that. This is a good episode. Next is the Northern Air Temple. So this is the episode where the team is also the episode where Sokka invents a hot air balloon. A great build up for the kind of leader that Sokka ends up being. This episode is going at the front end of great. And it turns out the last three episodes of Avatar are in the Water Tribe, where Aang and Katara learn their bending. This is a great episode for Katara, for her fighting for what's right and for showing how strong she truly is, how determined she truly is. Uh, this is also the episode where Sokka and Yue start their romance. I'm putting it, ooh, I'm gonna put it down here. It's a good episode. In this next episode, which is The Siege of the North Part One, this is the episode where Sokka and Yue's romance continues to flourish, but then she shuts him out because she can't, because she's engaged. Sokka is sad. He joins up in their fighting uh, battle ranks. Ends up he has to fight under Yue's fiance. Again, great episode for Sokka, showing more of his depth, showing how good of a person he is, that even though things are not going his way, he's still gonna do everything he can to help the cause and to protect Yue. This is also a great relationship for Zuko and Iroh's relationship. If I'm not wrong, this is the episode where Iroh tells him that you're like a son to me, and Zuko tells him, don't say it, but Iroh says it anyway. Finally, we have Aang going into the Avatar state, Zuko infiltrating the cave and, uh, facing off against Katara. Their face-off was great. Zuko ends up capturing Aang and taking him away. This episode is fantastic, and it is going in the upper end of great. Actually, you know what? 
I think it should go in the lower end of incredible. Yeah, I said it. And finally, the season finale, 20 freaking episodes in this season. Finally, we get to where uh, Zuko and Aang are caught in a snowstorm. Aang is in the Avatar state still, or rather, he's in the spirit world still. Um, and we get, again, a lot more depth out of Zuko as he's, again, facing all of his inner turmoil and kind of confessing to this comatose Aang what he's going through and all of these feelings that he's experiencing. Aang, while he's in the spirit world, is facing off against the face stealer and getting the information that he needs. General Zhao ends up getting into that cave thingy and kills the moon spirit. And then Yue sacrifices herself to take the place of the moon spirit so that the moon doesn't get destroyed. Waterbenders don't stop being able to bend and the world may go on. Oh, and then Zhao dies. Uh, Zuko does try to save him, but Zhao is too proud and won't take the help, so no. This season finale was good. I really like the depth that we get from Zuko, uh, but overall, I didn't love this as much as the fandom seems to. I don't really care about the face stealer. Um, Avatar, or Aang going into the Avatar state, which I forgot to mention, Aang going into the Avatar state and then becoming the fish creature and like batting down everybody and making the Fire Nation retreat. I don't really care about that. And overall, I was disappointed that with the amount of time, the three episodes that we spend in the Water Tribe, we never actually see Aang or Katara mastering water bending. It's just that suddenly Katara is the master and it seems like it's over a short period of time. I don't know how long, but it just seems so fast. And then it ends with the master saying, you're not a master yet, Aang. So here's your new master, Katara. And it's great. She can travel with him. They get to continue to train together. That's swell. But it all just seems so fast and I wanted more bending learning and less giant fish swatting ships away. But it was still good. It was still a good episode. So that's my final tier ranking list for season one. I want to be clear that this, even though I don't have anything in the perfect tier, even though my incredible tier isn't very big, this is because the first time I watched Avatar The Last Airbender, I would have said that season one was a solid 3.5 season. Now I would say it's definitely a four star season uh, now that I've watched it again and now that I love the show so much. My next two ranking videos of season two and season three are going to be much more positive. There will be a lot more videos that are really, really highly ranked because I love this show so much, but season one I'm a little bit more critical of because season one to me is a good season, even a great season, but not my favorite show of all time until seasons two and three. My laptop battery is about to die. So be sure to keep chatting with me more about this in the comments. What are some of the episodes that you would rank higher or lower? I post videos every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.